Hey everyone, Susanna here again. I can't explain to you how overwhelmed and excited I am that so many people were interested in sourcing on GitHub. Um, so now I'm actually gonna dive in this week to show you what it is that I personally look for when I'm assessing a GitHub user's profile. What makes an individual recruitable and worth my time and what doesn't. So jumping straight into things, we're gonna be using the same example that we did last week with good old Jake's profile. Now, right off the bat, the very first thing that I notice is that he does in fact have a user profile picture. So I'm able to right click on this picture and then scroll down to search Google for image. And this populates any associated websites that also use this specific image. As you can see here, this is the original source of the image that I chose to search. Now scrolling down further, I have access to Jake's homepage and some of his associated social links like Twitter and YouTube. Going back to his page here, I also noticed that he included both his first and last name. Now there's a very helpful Chrome extension that I like to use called LinkedIn People Search Tool. And doing a quick refresh of the page here, I'm now able to highlight any individual's name, then right click and click search LinkedIn for people named XYZ. And as you can see, Jake is the very first person to pop up. I want you guys to go on ahead and notice that he is a director of open software at University of Washington. That's gonna be important here, just a minute. So cruising down a bit further on Jake's profile, I see his username. There's another tool called namechecker.com. I'm able to enter in any user name, and this cross-references a abundance of different platforms in which people are able to use specific usernames. Um, so it's cross-referencing which of these platforms use that username, which ones still have that username available. I can first off see that Twitter does not have this username available for people. That to me tells me that Jake probably has a Twitter profile using the same username. Lo and behold, that is the case. Oh, and look at that. Stay tuned. So going back to his um, user profile here, I now see where Jake is a data scientist at, that is a specific link to um, his, employ his place of employment's GitHub profile, but it's the University of Washington, UWE Science. Now, I don't want people to get confused because this looks like it could be a school uh, or where he got his education, but this is always their place of employment. Um, scrolling down further, I now see access to where he's currently located. I do see where he chose to share his personal homepage, but I also see organizations that he's affiliated with, which is a honey hole of, of talent. For example, if I were to come across a GitHub user profile of like a woman in technology in Seattle, and I clicked on that organization in particular, Let's check out this one. Um, I'm able to see which people actually belong to the organization. So that's a really good outlet and honey hole to, again, find like-minded individuals. Now, going back to Jake's profile here, I'm going over the overview tab now, and I see where he chose to pin repositories. Pinned repositories are typically, um, well, first off, a repository, that's kind of a big word that if you don't code, you might not know. And a repository essentially is like the ultimate project folder for all, hmm, we're gonna mark that as red real quick, thanks boss. So it's ultimately a project folder that houses all of the code for a particular project. Um, now when I'm looking at repositories, you can either create your own or you can access somebody else's that they've created. Now, an easy way to distinguish between the two of those is I see here the Python Data Science Handbook is all in bold and there is no slash. That means Jake created this. Whereas I see here where there's only part of it bolded before the slash, that is the creator of that specific repository. Now, a couple of things about repositories that are notable is that people can star them or fork them Stars essentially are likes. We all know what likes are across social media. Um, a fork is what I was talking about when I said somebody wanted to copy that repository. 
Um, so they're forking the repository. They're making their own separate copy so that they can manipulate the code so that they can toy around with things without actually impacting the creator's master code. So some good indicators of whether or not a repository is um, is recruitable, the creator of the repository is recruitable, are the number of stars as well as the number of forks. Now, typically I like to see 100 plus stars um, and forks, I mean, any fork is a good fork, I think, um, but probably about 50 would be, be, my, be my point of reference there. Now, scrolling down further here, a contribution. I see where Jake has made almost 2,000 contributions this past year. Now, what is a contribution? There's three different levels of contributions. The first is called an issue, like, hey, he has issues. An issue is like you have a comment about something um, or you have a question about something. You have an issue with a particular piece of code that you would, you know, like, like to jive about. Um, the second piece of contributing to something is called a pull request. A pull request is a honey hole for recruiters. A pull request, also known as a PR, is a proposed change to the master code. So if I am looking at Jake's code and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can make this better in some way, shape, or form, or maybe you know I've even asked a question, somebody answered it, and I, I want to um, contribute that to the repository itself, I can create what's called a pull request. And the creator of that code can assess based on the feedback of the pull request. Here's an example, created a pull request. Um, and you can see that 145 indicators of, hey, I like that request, 118, excuse me, said thumbs down to it. Well, if a pull request is approved, that is awesome. Like you just kind of one up the creator of the code. But mm, since we're not getting competitive AF, um, you were very helpful. So a merged pull request is like a very good accomplishment. And as a recruiter, commenting, hey buddy, I could stumbled across your GitHub user profile and noticed that you made an excellent PR that was merged on a very um, popular repository, blah, blah, blah. That is the bee's knees and software developers love to hear that. I actually have a um, LinkedIn share from a developer here. So this developer on LinkedIn created um, this meme as well as the following um, status update. I made my first PR and it was approved and merged. Um, and dude, he was stoked about that. And as a recruiter, you know, we should definitely utilize that information to help with our warm outreach to individuals. Now, the third way of contributing is use, is by actually revising something, and that's called a comment. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of different comments. Um, so we've, again, very high overview of what exactly we're looking at when we're seeing Jake's personal profile here. But there's a couple of different uh, free tools that I would love to show you that help enhance this experience for us and give us a deeper glimpse as to who he is and what he does. Now, the first here, it's just a helpful tool. It's called the GitHub Hover Card. And as opposed to having to click on um, a repository to gain a better understanding and then try and diagnose what the heck all this stuff really means, this Hover Card enables us to hover over any sort of URL let me refresh. And it now gives us a glimpse into that URL. So as you can see here, I now see the different uh, programming languages that are involved in this particular repository, as well as a brief overview of it. Um, and I could scroll down further. Again, just kind of like an easy pre preview of various URLs. Now, another two extensions that I'm going to show you here at the same time are called GitHub User Rank, and then we have Octo. Come on, buddy, Octo HR. Now these two Chrome extensions look very similar because kind of shows you the different programming languages that Jake is familiar with, um, but it also has some degree of either a percentage or um, a ranking. Now these are not the same thing. So what we're first looking at over here, this is the GitHub user rank and the 
the data is based on get lance. But this shows me how Jake stacks up to the different programmers on GitHub in a particular language. So as you can see here, he is ranked in, gosh, the top, um, the top of the top of GitHub profiles for Python usage. But if you snap over here, it looks like he may, if I didn't know how to read this correctly, he may only have like 48 percent level proficiency. No, this is actually how often he uses a particular language throughout his very various coding endeavors on GitHub. Um, so again, this right here is your GitHub user rank. This right here is Octo HR. And something else that Octo HR is able to um, give us free access to is his email address. And then whether or not he is hireable. Now, I didn't mention this too much last week uh, when we dove into Octo Hunt, which is um, Octo Hunt is actually the counterpart to Octo HR's Seattle Octo HR's um, Chrome extension. So as you can see here, Octo Hunt is a way to search for individuals. Their competitive, their um, complement is Octo HR, which is a Chrome extension. Both show you whether or not somebody is hireable on GitHub jobs. Now, as you can see here, Jake is not hireable. Go to Octo Hunt, he is not hireable. However, some individuals are in fact hireable. Now this is based on the users checking a box um, as to whether or not they want to open themselves up as available for hire. This is very similar to like LinkedIn recruiters um, open to opportunities. Uh, and taking this again, I want to dive a little bit deeper into contributions here. There's two different ways that we can look at contributions to get a better understanding and feel for an individual. I want you just to kind of mentally note what this looks like now. Then I'm going to refresh after selecting my GitHub original streak extension. And as you can see, I now have access to uh, the longest streak a a user has contributed, how many days in a row they have contributed to a repository or just GitHub as a whole. Now, what this tells me is that if this guy was humping it for 42 days on GitHub, he's super duper passionate about that project. So I might wanna go back and find that project and I, I might wanna even mention that in my outreach to him in um, whenever I decide to, to reach out to him. But there's even a different way of going about visualizing this and given the two extensions conflict with each other, I'm going to turn this one off and dive into isometric contributions and click refresh. So as you can see, this is a 3D representation of his contributions. And I can see what his busiest day was, which was not available on the last extension that we used. This is just totally based on your preference, how you like to go about visualizing things. Um, but if I want to just go on ahead and look at his normal chart for for the sake of that since everybody has access to that a couple things that stand out to me when i'm looking at somebody's contribution chart are the days that he is active or that they are active on github what i mean by that primarily if they are active only monday through friday then they're typically just contributing to work-based projects, meaning like their employment. Um, but Saturday and Sunday projects, those are fun projects. So that if I wanted to go click on a particular day on a weekend where I see there was a high level activity, then I could get a better glimpse as to what might Jake be interested in um, and what he might like to actually work on in the future. So those are, again, just really good ways of enhancing the actual uh, GitHub profile as a whole. But then there's three different quick tools, I swear, um, that help you get a better summarized understanding of who Jake is and what he does, what he excels at. The first is called Coder Stats. It's yet another extension here. And it pops up on the left-hand bar, and it's a clickable link. I'm going to open it in a new tab for us. And this is essentially a summary of Jake's activity. Um, this is this is a great summary selling profile paragraph that you might want to send to your account managers if you do go about recruiting Jake. Uh, but taking it a step further, at the bottom here, there is a filterable table um, that gives you a glimpse as to all of his repositories um, that he's, he has either forked or contributed to. And 
as you can see, I, I have access to his most popular based on stars. Um, and then I could even take this one step further and use like a data scraping tool if I wanted to. For time's sake, I'm gonna use Instant Data Scraper that just pulled that entire data set for me if I wanted to go back and view it at a different time. Um, now, even cooler than coder stats, these are gonna be two of the very last tools that I share, um, but they're actually websites. So the first is called GitHub Profile Fed Depot. So it's gp.fedepot.com slash profile slash the username. And this gives you a very nice, uh, and it's kind of pretty, it's a visual representation of Jake's activity. And I'm able to move around um, whichever glimpse of activity that I want based on his comment date, which is nice. But again, I. It's a good visual representation. I'm not gonna spend too much time because there's a cooler one and it's called Talent Signals. Now talentsignals.com slash user slash the profile um, username. This is my fave. So as you can see here, um, not only do I get where he works, his username, blah, blah, blah. Um, I also see that he is not available for hire right now. So that's pulling information from a different extension that we use, as well as I get two email addresses, not just one, I get two email addresses, but I get a ton of information that was not accessible to me previously, um, such as when he joined GitHub. Um, I also get a glimpse into his favorite programming languages, which is very similar to you know the extensions that we use, but more so than that, I can see what his most recent programming languages are and which projects he actually contributed to using which programming languages. Now, what this tells me here, um, key information actually, is yes, we know that Jake is a Python programmer, but let's just say that uh, based on, I'm going to switch back over to his profile, based on this information, I would definitely think that, you know, yes, he's a Python pro, uh, he's a Python programmer. However, let's suppose he switched languages. Let's suppose he, um, he learned a new language um, or that Python became outdated. I don't know. Um, but this information would still show me that he's a Python programmer. Whereas if I use talent signals, I can see when he most recently used programming languages so I can see what he is doing now, um, which isn't necessarily captured using those other tools. Now, the last thing that I want to show you when it comes to talent signals is just like I mentioned when it comes to organizations being a honey hole for like-minded individuals, talent signals actually shows you people that he has recently collaborated with. So Jake's obviously a pretty busy, popular guy. So if he's taking the time to collaborate with these individuals, then they're probably worth your time too. Um, and then just kind of kind of looking a little bit further, I'm able to see the different, com uh, let's see, I'm able to see the different commitment contributions that he's made. Um, and I, I see another pull request here that I might be interested in later. But again, very, very, very high level, um, overview as to what a GitHub profile is and different tricks as recruiters we can use to help gain a better understanding of an in individual, what makes them recruitable, what doesn't, and lots of free tools. So I hope you guys found this very useful. Next week, we're actually going to cover um, how to find a GitHub user's email addresses aside from the ways that we already have. In addition, we're going to be able to stalk the heck out of them on various social media sites uh, using, again, lots of free tools, techniques, and technologies. Um, and as always, please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Um, I love your feedback. It was so refreshing to know that I'm like not the only person that um, is trying to source on GitHub. So again, really appreciate you guys and stay tuned.